T-Rex was greatly misidentified in the movie as a giant, blind Komodo dragon, when in reality, it was a feathered creature with some of the best hunting skills to ever walk the earth. Hello there guys, and after the shocking first episode of Jurassic Park Month, I'm taking a break. Your walk is a cautionary tale of knowing too much. The underlining message of the game, and the story, is some things are better left unknown. Hello there guys, and after taking a break from Jurassic Park Month, and then to Year Walk, I'm completely refreshed. So first of all, I just want to start out with a newer change for this series. It has come to my attention another YouTube series has the same title. I was just gonna assume it was no big deal and just continue using my name, but then I found out the people who owned the name was Fox TV, Animation Domination, and had the name Trademark. First of all, I want to say that that's like trademarking the words cat dog, and I don't think anyone should be able to trademark the simple phrase scientifically accurate. Anyways, this has caused me to change the name of this series to avoid any problems in the future from scientifically accurate to scientifically inaccurate. So yeah, the name has slightly been changed. Hope you're happy, US government and trademarks. Well, anyways, I digress. Last time, we learned the way of cloning shown in the film should be impossible for dinos due to their DNA not surviving that long, as well as dino-toad hybrids does not make any sense, and finally that T-Rex had great eyesight and had feathers. Oh yeah, and here's an awesome chart I found on the internet made by Nature.com describing the most up-to-date facts on T-Rex. So now that we've learned just the basic inaccuracies in the film series, let's get down to the dinosaurs themselves, individually. So let's go where we left off, Velociraptors. Boy did they butcher this one. The Velociraptors seen in the movies are scaly and lizard-like, being described as six feet tall, hunting in packs like modern wolves, using their giant sickle-like claw to stab, slash, and disembowel into prey. These creatures are very violent, intelligent, and would be fatal to whoever it hunts. Now, let's describe a real Velociraptor. A real Velociraptor would be 1.6 feet tall, about the size of a small cat, considerably smaller than the highly exaggerated sizes in the movie. This is a massive incorrect height difference. But to Velociraptor's defense, although itself was not 6 feet tall, it did have many relatives of a larger height. Velociraptor was related to the larger Dinochuthis, which was 4 feet tall, Ancelobiter, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, which was 6 feet tall, and the terrifying Utahraptor, which was a shocking 9 foot tall monster. All of Velociraptor's ancestors sort of fused into Jurassic Park's Velociraptor, which was primarily based off of Dinochuthis body, Ancelobiter's height, and a Velociraptor's brain. So yeah, they got the height wrong. What else did they get wrong? Well, for starters, unlike T-Rex, Velociraptor is certain, irrefutable proof that itself and all of its relatives were covered in feathers. And unlike the T-Rex, had them all over their bodies. Indentation in Velociraptor bones reveal it had wings. These wings were probably used in the same way ostriches use their wings, for steering. Also, Velociraptor was a species of dinosaur from an ancestry that was the closest related to birds, therefore would have many characteristics of modern birds. For this reason, Velociraptor would probably act very, very similar to hawks, eagles, and other birds of prey. These feathers were probably used for display to attract mates, like most raptors today. For this reason, scientists predict some forms of sexual dimorphism or differentiation between male and females of a species in dinosaurs like Velociraptor. Scientists strongly believe male Velociraptors probably were covered in colorful, flamboyant feathers to attract mates, similar to a bird of paradise from today. 
They picture the female velociraptors as being covered in boring feathers to distinguish between male and female. The scientifically accurate depiction of a velociraptor displays a very complex creature with many layers of unique features. Display feathers for mating dances, wings that help it steer when running, and picky females that only choose the best and most beautiful males. So, that being said, if you want a dinosaur that is the least bird-like, you should not choose Velociraptor. Velociraptor would probably be among the most bird-like dinosaurs, and would most likely appear and act almost nothing like reptiles. So, what do the Velociraptors in the movie look like? Of course they don't look anything like birds. Of course they have no personality besides looking scary and killing other creatures. Of course they are not covered in my opinion very interesting and unique feathers. And of course they are six times larger than they really would be in real life. This is the main problem with all the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. It simply disappoints me that something so interesting and so unique to begin with has turned into a boring and extremely basic design. The creators of the movie had an interesting monster practically handed right to them on a silver platter and chose not to create something cool and unique, but something very ordinary and done before. I am not angry, I am something worse. Disappointed Jurassic Park. You could have made a very very cool and memorable dinosaur, but you didn't. You could have created a complex creature that was both beautiful and terrifying at the same time but you chose not to. These animals, the dinosaurs, were amazing and deserves more respect for their awesomeness. Yet, you don't represent them in the way that they should have been represented. That being said, let's look at some other things that the Velociraptor had in the movies. Well, did they at least hunt in packs like in the movies? Recent studies say yes. Velociraptors have the long legs of a sprinter and a long tail for balance. They are perfectly adapted to outrun their prey, but the thing is, raptors were too small to take on prey by themselves. This means they probably hunted in packs like wolves, so Velociraptor would need teamwork and probably did work together to pursue prey, as seen in the movie. So next question, were they intelligent? Well, for a dinosaur, it is thought that they are somewhat intelligent due to their brain size relativity to body size. But, it turns out, that's basically saying that they were slightly more intelligent than a board with a nail in it. For reference, the dinosaur that is thought to have been the smartest of all the dinosaurs was Troodon. And Troodon is thought to have been around as smart as a primitive possum. So, there goes the whole Velociraptor thing out the window. The deepest thoughts a Velociraptor ever thought were probably on the level of the seagulls in Finding Nemo. Hardly the smarter than dolphins, whales, and some primates that Dr. Alan Grant in Jurassic Park 3 suggests. They would coordinate their attacks so the prey wouldn't know what was going on. They could talk to each other. To a degree we never imagined. Really, they were smart. They were smarter than dolphins or whales. They were smarter than primates. No! Was their sickle-like claw used to stab, disembowel, and kill prey? Well, to understand that, we must reference one of the most important and most perfect dinosaur fossils. In 1971, scientists in Mongolia discovered a legendary fossil. This fossil was later called Fighting Dinosaurs. It is a freeze frame or snapshot of the time dinosaurs ruled, perfectly intact. It is almost as if time paused and fossilized just as they were alive. The fossil features Velociraptor and Protoceratops, and relative of Triceratops, in a fight to the death. The specimens are almost completely preserved and details most of these creatures' fighting methods. The Velociraptor's killing claw being thrusted into the Protoceratops' throat. This displays the true use of the raptor's claw. In reality, the claw was not used to stab into the hide of prey, but the throats of their prey. A recent study has shown that the Velociraptor claw was simply too weak to pierce the skin of most dinosaurs. So, once again, the Velociraptors featured in Jurassic Park are inaccurate. It did not use its claw to stab and disembowel into prey, but used it to slit throats, causing a quick and fatal death.
So, all in all, Velociraptor's accuracy in Jurassic Park was butchered the crap out of. It is displayed as a six foot tall, featherless lizard with a great amount of intellect as well as a knife like claw used to stab prey. When in reality, it was a very small, extremely bird like dinosaur that used its killing claw to slit throats of prey. Heck, they even got the idea that the Velociraptors lived in America wrong. So why did they name the dinosaurs featured in the film Velociraptors even though any remnants of anything dinosaur was definitely not Velociraptor? Well, we all know the answer to that, because it sounds cooler than Utahraptor, or however you pronounce that one's name. The reason Velociraptors are represented so inaccurately in the movie is because any remnants of a dinosaur left over from the lizardfication of said dinosaur did not belong to Velociraptor in the first place. Many of the traits the Velociraptors have in the movie, such as intelligence and size, are actually traits belonging to Utahraptor and Troodon, and not Velociraptor at all. So we begin with an inaccurate dinosaur before we lizardfocate it, and after lizardfication, the Velociraptor is so far from the original concept that it pays no resemblance to the original source material. This is why Jurassic Park's Velociraptors are so inaccurate and gets people angry. This is a common fate for most of the dinosaurs represented in media, and will unfortunately be seen many times again. So, what would be a more accurate image of Velociraptor? Well, based off of the fossils, Velociraptor would probably look, act, and fight a lot like this. We see Velociraptor probably hunted creatures its size, not humans six times larger than itself. We can see Velociraptor hunted Protoceratops, as seen here at a watering hole. Wait a second, play that clip of Protoceratops again, with sound this time. A potential meal? I've heard that sound effect before. To hole a plump? yet stocky Protoceratops. A potential meal. Her ...until the dinosaurs evolve in 30 million years' time. Come on, you couldn't even afford your own sound effects? Oh, but I like those documentaries. Now, to give the Jurassic Park series credit, they do slightly alter the Velociraptors in Part 3, but they still mess it up. The Velociraptors have almost no feathers, having only a mohawk of feathers on their heads. And remember, unlike T-Rex, Velociraptor was covered head to toe in feathers. They do also sort of involve sexual dimorphism into the Velociraptors too, having the males have mohawks and the alpha females be featherless. You can see some effort was put in there. But once again, this is a prime example of too little, too late. The cultural impact the Velociraptors had in the first movie has already been done. Even after these raptor apologies have been delivered, they still aren't too accurate. Their height is still off, yet I could see why they kept it that way. They still have very little feathers, only being featured right there. And these Velociraptors are more intelligent than the ones in the previous movies, when Velociraptors were probably no smarter than a turkey. Once again, even with Jurassic Park 3's alterations, the raptors are still highly inaccurate. Now, what about the dinosaurs other than T-Rex and Velociraptor? Are they accurate? 